Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be doing a highly requested tutorial and show you how to create an HTML and PHP contact form. In this first part we will be discussing the HTML structure of the form and in the next part we will add the PHP code to process it. So to get started we're going to open up Dreamweaver and we're going to be creating a new PHP document. So once we have that done you can see that we are in design view and if you flip over to code view we just have the default code here. So we're just going to go back into design the view and then I'm going to insert a table. So we're going to go up to insert and then go to table. Alright, I'm going to make the table 400 pixels and then we're going to make one row and one column. We're going to also take and put um, a border of one and cell padding of zero. Okay, so we're just going to click OK, and so you can see that we have our table right here. So we're just going to center this. First, click on the table, and then go over to your code view. And then with this table, um, we're going to take, and in the basic table tag right here, right after the cell padding, just hit space, and then type start typing a line, and you'll see it highlighted over here in the code helper. Hit enter, and then hit enter again to center that. So when we go back to design view, you can see that it's right in the center of our document. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to type uh, some text. So I'm going to say, if you would like to contact me, fill out the form below. Okay, so we can just take that, and if we want to center this text, we'll just go back to our code view, and for this TD tag, which is the table column, we're just going to hit a space right there and do the exact same thing to align that to the center. So the exact same thing as I did for the entire table. So we're going to go back to design view. And right after our text, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and we need to put two spaces. And the way that you can add spaces, you can either hit the enter key to add paragraph spacing, which we don't want to do, or you can add breaks. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to the code view. And right after our text, I'm just going to take and type a bracket and then br space and then a, a slash, and then another closing bracket. And so we're just going to do that twice. And what that's going to do is it's going to add two spaces without adding a paragraph. So what we're going to do right there is we're going to start adding our form in. So we're going to go up to insert, then form, and then we're going to go to the basic form right here. So what happens is when you're creating a form, you need to make sure that all of your form all of your table, all of your elements are all within this red box right here. So you want to make sure that you create your form before you actually put anything inside of it just to be sure that everything is in there. So once you have this, what you can do is start creating your form. So if you go over the code view, you can see that you have this form right here and it's denoted by this orange color so that you can tell exactly where it's at. So while we have that, let's uh, take and change some of the settings. So for uh, the form ID, we're just going to change it to contact form. And then all of this stuff that we're changing in any of the tutorial today is going to be used in the PHP processing of it. So when I change the ID and the name, it's to change it so that we can grab that up later and we can more easily tell what the information is. So for the name, we're also going to make it the same thing. So we're going to also call it contact form. Uh, it's going to have a method of post and then the action... The action is basically what it's going to look for in order to figure out how it's going to be processed. So where is it going to look? And basically we're going to write the information right up above um, the HTML because we made it a PHP document. So the action is going to be the file itself. So what we're going to do is call it contact underscore form dot PHP. So you can call this whatever you want, just make sure that this is the same name as what you're saving your document as. So I'm just going to go do file save as, and we're going to call it contact underscore form. And we're just going to save that onto the desktop. So now we'll have the same thing right there. All right, so we're going to go back into design view, and then we're still within our form. So I'm going to insert another table. So we're going to go to table, and we're just going to make this um, 100% and I think we're going to need five rows and two columns. So I'm just going to click OK. Well, first we also need some cell padding, so I'm just going to put three cell padding. That should give us enough space that the text isn't right up against the walls of the table. And then we're going to need no border. So I'm just going to click OK. And it's going to add that within our form. 
So before we get started, I'm just going to take, and on the bottom row, I'm going to hold control, click on each of these cells, and I'm going to right click and go to table, and then go to merge cells. And you can see that it has merged the cells so that now instead of having two singular cells, we now have one larger cell. And we're gonna put something in there later. All right, so to actually get started with our form, what we're gonna do is start typing in what we want. So uh, I'm just doing some basic things. So I'm gonna do name, email, and message. And that's the basic contact form that you're gonna have. You might add in check boxes or other things later, but um, you'll at least know how to work with the text inputs and the text areas, which would be for the message. So I'm just gonna start by typing name and then colon, and then the next one on the left side, I'm just going to type uh, email and then a colon. And then we're also going to type message and then a colon. And uh, we're probably going to want each of these aligned to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click within, uh, say, the name one, go over to the code view. And then where it has this uh, TD right here, I'm just going to hit space. And this is the same way that we've been aligning other things. I'm just going to type, uh, start typing a line until it shows it up here in the code view. Hit enter and then go down to right. And then I can just take and copy this. And then for each of these other things right here for email, we can take, hit space, and then just paste that in there. And also for the message. So again, it's right. It's the one that's right next to where the text is that um, you have. And if you can't find anything, just go back to design view, click in, uh, inside or next to what you want to, or what you uh, want to change, and then go over to your code view, and it'll put your cursor right next to where that's actually at in design view. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to take and drag this uh, over here. And basically, you're just dragging around where uh, the column splits up, so where that percentage is. So we're just going to keep the text off to the left. And so the next thing that we're going to do is um, it's just a little bit of a design element. Uh, we're going to take and make sure that each of these has a different color. So for this top one for name, I'm just going to go to the code view. We're going to go to uh, the table row. So we're within the name. You can see that this is where our cursor ended up over here. And we're just going to go into this TR tag. You can see that for each one of these uh, rows, there's a TR, which is the row, and then a TD, which is the column. So within the TR, we're just going to hit enter, or sorry, space, and then we're going to type BG color, and then we're going to hit equals, two quotes, and then go back inside of the quotes, and make sure that you hit the number sign, because if you don't hit the number, it's not going to work, and then we're going to hit six C's. Now you can do this um, option if you want or not, you can skip this uh, if you don't want it to, but basically what it's going to do is I'm just going to copy this. What it's going to do is in our contact form, it's going to make this gray for the background of that row. So what that's going to allow us to do is see exactly what we're going to um, basically allow your eye to follow all the way across. If you have multiple lines on this contact form, um, way more than just three, then it might start becoming confusing when all of it is uh, kind of jumbled together without any lines or anything to break it up. So I'm also going to do the same thing for message. So I'm going to go to message, then the TR, hit space, and just paste that in there, and we're good to go. I'm just going to save real quick. And now we're ready to uh, start adding in some other information. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually add in the inputs, um, so the form elements, so what the user is going to be putting their text into to send in an email. So we're going to start with the name, and we're going to just click within this uh, cell right here and then we're going to go to insert then go to form and we're going to go to text field and it'll bring up this little box and for the ID you want to make sure that you remember what this is and we're just going to type in name right here and you can type whatever you want I'm just going to put name so we're going to click OK and then we can go over to the code view and you can see exactly what it is put in and another trick is if you click on an element specifically like if I were to control click on any of these table um, cells, it'll show you exactly what that is highlighted in the code view. So if we click on this form element and go over to the code, it's going to show um, right where it's at. So it's going to show the text input right here. So as of right now, all we have is the name and the ID as name. So that's good. Um, we will be able to use that in the PHP later. But I'm also going to show you a couple of other things you can add in here um, to just give you a couple more options. So say that you have, um, you want to make sure that you're limiting your users so that they don't put some outrageously long name in there that's obviously fake. So I'm assuming that an average name, just a first and last name, will probably be somewhere around 30 characters. So what we want to do 
is limit the characters to 30. And the way that we're going to do that is by typing max length and we're going to hit equals and then two quotes and then inside of max length we're going to type 30. So that'll limit it to 30 characters. And then we also want the size of the um, the size of the form element this distance, the width basically of this to be also 30 characters. And the way that you can do that is by taking and just typing size equals two quotes and then inside of the quotes type 30. So basically the size doesn't force it to stop typing characters but the max length will. So the size is basically a visual element and then the max length is basically a dynamic element. So what I'm going to do is just type uh, or just uh, copy this max length and size so that we can use that later and just copy that and then we're going to go over to the, the design view and then go to email and what we're going to do is insert another uh, one of those elements so another text field and once we do that we're just going to call this email so I'm going to click OK and then we're going to go back over into code view and again we're going to type in or just paste in the max length and the size and for this one I'm assuming an email might be a lot longer or it could be a lot longer so I'm going to give them uh, 50 characters of size in order to do that. So we're going to go back to design view and you can see that that has updated uh, within our row there. So the last thing that we're going to do um, as far as adding elements is go into the message and we're going to click inside of that table uh, and or this um, cell and then we're going to go up to insert then form and then we're going to go to text area and for this uh, what we're going to do is we're going to type message for the ID and click OK and then we can go over to the code view and you can see that it's a little bit different than what we have been dealing with you can see now we have uh, name and ID which we're already familiar with we have those for the other elements but we also have columns and rows and what columns and rows are, are basically the same thing as tables if you think about um, columns it's going to be how wide something is and rows is going to be how tall it is so it's, it basically applies the same here um, it's going to be 40 wide in uh, our example and then five rows tall so if you want to have more space height wise you're going to add in more rows and if you want it to be longer you're going to add in more columns now for some reason Dreamweaver sometimes will um, show the text area a little bit smaller than it actually is um, for example if we actually put this onto the web right now uh, this text area would actually go to the end of this instead of stopping where it's at so it just takes a little bit of getting used to but it's nothing that you can't uh, get past. So now that we have that done uh, I think that we're ready to actually start adding in some of the buttons that we're going to need to use so we're just going to go back over to, to the design view and then what we're going to do is align this uh, cell right here right so you should have still two rows at the bottom and so this second from the bottom row what we're going to do is click in the right side of it, go to the code view, and then basically go into the TD that's right next to it, hit space, and then we're going to align to the right. Okay, so go back to design view, and now we're adding stuff over here instead of on the left over here. So what we're going to be doing is putting in the submit button. So we're going to go up to insert, and then we're going to go to form, and then go to button. And then for the ID of this, um, we're just going to say submit and click OK. And then you have some options down here at the bottom or in your properties window, wherever uh, you may have that sitting. If you don't have it, you can go to window and then properties to get that. And down here, um, the value is basically what it's going to say on the button. So if we made it, if we wanted to say candy, then you just hit candy and click off of it and it'll change the button to say that. So um, you can actually make some pretty dynamic buttons with that. But we just want it to say submit right now. So um, that's going to actually submit our button. So if we go over to the code view, you can see what that looks like over here. Um, it shows a value of submit and it's got the name and ID of submit as well. So we'll just go back to design view and now we're going to probably add one of the most important things in the form. We're going to go to insert and then form and then we're going to go to hidden field. Now what hidden field is is basically what it sounds like. Um, it's something that you can't see but it helps process the information. So we're going to go over to the code view and then we're going to come into uh, the hidden field and if we see right here we have a type which is hidden. We have a name which is hidden field 
and we have an ID which is hidden field. Now instead of hidden field, we could use these, but I'm gonna make it something that makes a little bit more sense to me. Um, and what it's basically going to do is process the variables or what we call in web development parsing variables. So I'm just going to make this parse, P-A-R-S-E underscore var. So it's going to parse the variables and that's going to be the name and I'm just gonna, you can basically double click on that and then control C and then control V to paste it right inside of the ID area. So what that's going to do is allow us to access that within the PHP. Now we also need one more thing inside of here. Uh, we're also going to need to add a value inside of our hidden uh, type. And so we're just going to, after um, the ID, after the quote mark, we're just gonna hit space. And we're gonna type value equals and then a couple quotes and then go back into the quotes and what we're gonna type is contact form. So basically what we're gonna use this for is when we go and add in the PHP in the next video, um, we're going to say that if this um, form, if parse var is equal to contact form, then you can actually send the email. So it's basically um, stopping people from getting past um, just a basic test. So it'll allow us to make sure that the submit button has been clicked and that um, it is in fact from this contact form. So we're just going to go back to design view and that'll sit right there and it won't even really show up. Uh, you won't even see it at all in the final result. So we're just going to click again on the left of that and then we're going to go to insert, form, and then button. And this is our uh, last element right here and we're just going to make a reset button. So I'm just going to go to the ID, type reset, and then click OK. And you can see down here in your properties again, you have um, the value of submit as we had last time, but you also have an action and right here you have submit form, but there's also a reset form button. And if you click that, you can see that the value has changed to reset. Basically what this will do is allow um, users, if they've really screwed up what they were typing in here, um, they will be able to actually um, click this button and it'll just clear the entire form. So. This is basically it for the HTML shell. Um, you just needed to make sure that you have all of the names and IDs um, in the proper manner. Otherwise, uh, you will have some issues when it comes to the PHP. Um, so basically what we have right now is the shell of our contact form. We have it to where people can see the contact form, they can type stuff into the fields, and they can click the submit and reset button. And the reset button will actually work, but the submit button won't do anything. Basically, we're just writing the information down, but what the PHP is going to do is actually process the information. It's going to send an email. It's going to put it into a database, and in our case, send an email, but you can also do other things with it. So that's what we're going to add in the next tutorial. So I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.